I am Shaughnessy Nestling. I work in New York on Long Island. I've been an agent for five years, and I use social media every waking moment to gather business. My name is Amy Gregory, and I am from Phoenix, Arizona. And I have been, I've had my license for about 15 years, but I've just been using it the last three years. And I use, like, exclusively social media to generate leads. I had two previous businesses prior to doing Social, like real estate, and it dawned on me that I could make way more money doing real estate and using social media. So I switched. Hi, my name is Gogo Batki. I always run business on social media because I started as a broke agent. Um, social media is my job. I take it seriously, and I've been an agent for eight years. Uh, Mike Reese, I've been in real estate since 2002. And um, I've been using social media, I guess, really since 2000. I think I got my Facebook account in 2009. So, 2009. Nice. So I want to get a good understanding of where we're all at as far as like using social media for our business. So if you're using Facebook right now, go ahead and raise your hand. What about Instagram? Twitter? Okay. And LinkedIn? And what about YouTube? Are there any other ones that you use on a regular basis? If so, just shout them out. Snapchat. Snapchat. Okay. Okay. So, what is the primary social channel that you guys are using, and why did you pick that channel? I use Facebook primarily. I also just started posting most of my video content to Instagram because obviously Google owns it, so they're going to give that precedence. Um, Facebook is just something that I've been on since 2008. The college I went to was one of the first colleges that had it. So it's just inherently, I grew up with it. So I've been using it kind of on a higher level. Prior to real estate, I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I lived in North Carolina and I knew nobody. So I used social media to create relationships and gain friends. And I realized very quickly that I could be an influencer on social media. Um, I started working for a couple of other small businesses and running their social media pages. And they went from like the eighth page of Google to the first page of Google. Um, this is all while I was at home with my kids. Then when I was getting divorced and I realized I need to pay bills and take care of my children, I have nobody else to do it for me. I got my real estate license and then just started blasting the crap out of social media with real estate. I primarily use Instagram. Um, like I said, I am a stay-at-home mom and I work about 10 hours a week. And I make six figures selling real estate just because of Instagram. I had two online businesses prior to doing real estate and so that's where I really learned social media. Um, and then a home builder wanted me to come do social media consulting for him. And so as I was doing that, I realized, oh, actually I'm gonna go take this slice of the pie right here. Um, as I was advising him, I realized this is where I belong. So it's all on Instagram, and it's kind of like, um, everyone loves HGTV, so it's like putting HGTV on my clients anymore, and uh, that's how that started. So I feel like the two platforms for me work totally different. They are linked, um, so I only post once, but I do choose um, if I'm going to send it over to Facebook or not. Uh, most of my business, I mean, all of my business always came from social media. I never bought leads, um, so I can thank Facebook and <laughs> Instagram for that. I've done over 45 million in my career. Every single one of them came from the platform. Um, I, I'm probably a little bit different. I, I, um, I look at, I'm not as good as these people. I want to be like them when I grow up. <laughs> so, yeah, I do. So I'm, mine's a, I'm a little bit different. I just buy traffic. I promote content. To me, social media is like, um, the best way I can describe it, it's like the tollway in Dallas, right? There's Everybody's going up and down the tollway, and I want them to exit at my store. And so, you know, for me, I just, I know the math, right? If I do need to do a workshop, I flew to Cleveland. We were doing a live event. I went there for a golf tournament. We had 12 people registered. I shot a video promoted that video to people I did not know, that did not know me, and we had a uh, standing room um, at that event. Over 500 people watched the 100% of a four minute video. 
right? So for me, social media is all about producing content so that people will pay you uh, with their attention. And um, you, and I think the, 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 the holy grail is being able to get organic traffic um, where people, you know, start, where you don't have to pay. But unfortunately, I got to pay because no one was Okay, but money. those metrics of having 500 people finish a four-minute video, that's really high. That's really high. Too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, over 100,000 people in the last 60 days is my current custom audience, the engaged audience. And so what I'm doing, which is kind of unique, if you follow Frank Kern or Grant Cardone, there's a deal called Kern Cardone. Um, you know, they're, they're charging $30,000 to teach people how to do sequential pixeling, which is basically how you embed pixels. And then basic, um, think about like a playlist, right? So, you know, you, for me, what's working really good right now for me, and I think it's like the wild, wild west. I don't think it's gonna be like that forever. Um, but, you know, consistently posting, you know, live videos, finding out which ones get the most engagement, then taking those, th those core pieces of content and creating a campaign, which a campaign is an organized effort to get to a goal. So in Frank Kern's course in 2009, which changed my life as a marketer, he said he had a product called Mass Control. Mass Control meant well, how did you control the masses? You had to have interest, desire, bonding, trust, proof, and samples. So think about samples are like testimonial videos, uh, proof, demonstration. They could never sell the elevator until they demonstrated how the elevator worked, right? So it's it's just getting once you're doing all the things that you're doing. Whether for me, what I always struggle with is, to be honest, I like to attract agents. That's just what I like to do. It seems like a good use of my time. So I, if, if if I was selling real estate, I think the same principles would would be there. The truth is, I've never sold a home probably from social media. Um, so that's not my expertise, but I've recruited a lot of agents from social media. And that's just, I think the principles are probably the same. Um, but it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna give it back to the experts. <laughs> that's my perspective. You have a business page which is being regulated by Facebook. They have algorithms of how they're gonna choose to show it to your audience. You have a personal page. If you're friends with the people on your personal page, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that they like you and they know you in real life. So if they already like you, there you go, you have trust, right? So if you're consistently reminding them that you're a realtor, but it's not that boring, hey guys, come to my open house, this is a really nice house behind me. As long as it's not that boring realtor stuff, but more like Gogo was saying, the real life behind the scenes, the nitty gritty, the smelly foreclosures. You know, so if you're showing that stuff on a regular basis, they're gonna start to realize, oh wow, look, she's in another house. Oh wow, I remember that from last week. I can't believe all the stuff that she does. I can't believe all the people that she's helping. So it's just a consistent <coughs> way to remind them gently without shoving it down their throats. So for me, I'll post one time a day on my business page, and it's usually business oriented. And then I will just consistently, every waking minute, you know, whatever we're doing is going on social media. So what's the balance? How often are you actually posting business type of posts on your personal page? As far as like come to my open house, I'll share it from my business page um, to my personal page, but not always. I open house like it's my job because it is. Um, on any given weekend, we have six to eight open houses going for my listings alone. So I'm, I'm not going to blast my friends and family with that. That's boring. Nobody cares. We don't. Um, so what I do is just more organic things. I like to think I'm pretty funny. Someone told me the other day that I'm uh, a not well-paid comedian. I said, actually, I'm probably a very well-paid comedian. Um, so, you know, people like to connect with humor, and I, I do a lot of video. And when they see you, like, I knew Gogo -Go when she walked in the room. I've never met her before because I've consistently seen you on social media. I, I feel like I know you, you know? so. You, you just take down that wall, you take down that barrier. So if you know someone is seeing your videos on a consistent basis, they already know you. So you're getting a hug at your listing appointment. You're not getting a, a, all the realtors here. You know, it's different. Do you guys have an opinion that you want to share on that? 
Just want to get everyone in for a shot before I move on, that's all. Yeah, so for me it's totally different. I moved here from Romania, I'm Hungarian by nationality, so my whole family, my childhood friends, I was 21 when I moved here. Everybody is back home, everybody speaks a different language, my parents don't even speak English. Um, so for me, I do it the opposite. Uh, for me, business is business, personal is personal. Also, I feel like, yes, you can reach your friends and your personal, but I also don't want to shove down on their throat that I'm a realtor every single day. I want that to be a choice to them. So if they're true friends of yours, they're going to come over and follow you anyway. Um, and your personal, you're limited to 5,000 people. I would have outrun that years ago. Um, so I do it different, um, mostly because really my parents, I, they didn't sign up for the uh, American dream I did. <laughs> so uh, that's why I do it differently. Okay. I'm on Instagram and I probably, it's probably 80, 20. Um, a lot of it is my real life. So if you were following me this week, you saw that I went to my son's city championship game. I was at outdoor school. I was showing a million dollar house. And then I'm here and I'm gonna go home tonight and show a house. And then you're gonna see me at soccer games tomorrow. And um, part of that is because for me, I think you have to identify your story and you have to tell your story. Like, stories sell. That's why you sit at the park and gossip or wherever it is. Stories sell. So what's your story? Go-Go story is the American dream. That is fascinating to watch. And you want to watch that unfold. My story is I'm a stay-at-home mom to four and I'm out, I'm out earning some of my friends' husbands that work 40 hours a week. And I'm not saying that to be boastful, I'm saying that to say, if you wanna, if you wanna go for it, go for it. Like, if, if it's possible for GoGo, it's possible for me, right? And if it's possible for me, then it's possible for you. And so I think you have to identify what is your story? What is, you know, I have an agent that's joining um, my group here soon, and she's gonna leave her corporate job because she wants to be able to drive carpool and make dinner. And so I'm like, your story is if you don't like your circumstances, change it and share that on social media all day long, all day long. And everyone has sat and watched it unfold. They've sat and said, oh my gosh, that is, a, she's listing a million dollar house, that's crazy. And then they're gonna see me retire my husband and then they're gonna see me retire myself and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he um, bought the same job since college, 20 years corporate America, and as of Tuesday, it was his last, <laughs> I call it real job, <laughs> last, day at, <laughs> last day at his real job. I almost didn't come to this event because um, we just had so much going on, we, you know, he just quit his job. He came out with a bank, two listings, and accepted offers right away, multi bidding situation, cash offer all the time. So I mean, anything you can think of in the first two weeks, he did it. Um, his friends, of course, making fun of him, said it's about. Okay, but wait, that deserves like a round of applause. Oh, no. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So he left his former American job as a new ESP agent, and he's like hitting the ground running, and GoGo's -Go been able to like take him from, you know, like it's just amazing. Yeah, no, you bought his skill set. You I mean, he, he had uh, eight years of an earful. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that helped him a lot, you know, to kind of figure out how this really goes down. But what I meant to say by that is his friends uh, one night at dinner were kind of making fun of him and said, hey, it's, uh, are you going to hand in your men card now? And uh, so probably I'm saying he is not part <laughs> Google's real estate. He's running his own real estate and going to build his own, you know, name and brand and, and all that. But That's I'm amazing. happy for him. Yep. <laughs> um, about content, is that what we're saying? Content, right? Yeah, the so content, so your strategy, how, uh, the kind of content that you're using, why you're choosing that content, and if you're using a scheduling platform or anything like that. Um, I am mindful of my content um, because you're telling a story. You have to tell a story. And while I think in real life we want to know all of you, on social media I think we need 10% of you <laughs> because otherwise it's too much. Right, and so um, people that follow me on social media will know a handful of things about me. They know that I love to be out by the pool, they know that I love metal straws, they know that I have four kids, they know that I do the real estate. The metal straws is super quirky, that's why people remember it, and every time they see a paper straw, they're gonna think, oh, Amy Gregory hates paper straws. Like, I know that sounds dumb, but I'm serious. I can't tell you how many comments when people see me, oh my gosh, you don't have a straw, what are you gonna do? Okay, so it's like little quirky things. What is the quirky thing? And then, um, yeah, I think I do plan out my posts. Um, I'm not super consistent on it, but you can just save your posts in Instagram. Like you can do it as a draft and just save them. And so I'll always have like eight to 10 city events so that 
when I need to post something, I can just hit post. Um, so I would do that. The other thing I would do is I would say, change your handle to your name. If your handle is not your name, change it now. It needs to be Amy Gregory or whatever your name is. If your name is taken, it's the Amy Gregory or Amy Gregory is here or Amy Gregory sells homes. Get a little bit clever. And I'm going to tell you why. We're a couple of years away from it being, hey, Alexa, call the best rated real estate agent in my area. Yeah. That, you know, hey, Alexa, call Amy Gregory. They have to know your name. I had an agent DM me recently, should I change my handle? And I said, yes. She DM me the next day. She said, I changed my handle. I gained 60 new followers because people did not know who the request was coming from. So do not hide behind real estate one, two, three, four, or whatever it is. It is your name. I wish I could say there was a strategy to my madness. There isn't. Um, I could show you my. <laughs> I can show you my disk assessment and you'll understand why. I am a very high DNI, very low SNC. I could care less for the details. I am not organized. I don't have a file for my closings. I have Christy for that. Um, so for me, it's really just showing the, the good, bad, and the ugly, showing what it takes, showing your hustle, showing your ethics, showing um, you know your life, um, showing what you achieved. I think that's very, very important um, because when people get to see that how how you do it, um, in the end of the day, just as she said, I don't work, um, I, don't, I don't work at all the way I look at it because I get to do what I love, so it does not feel like work at all. Um, anything that, what I consider work is things that um, I don't like doing, but I have to do it anyway, and those things are probably mostly hired out. Um, so nothing I post is planned. I literally just share my life, I share what I did today, what's in plan, you know, how we sell houses, what's funny, you know, good, bad, makeup, no makeup, <laughs> all that. I, I feel like when you show your real side, uh, people tend to gravitate towards you because they feel like they're like you. Um, and people are hang with people alike and same with clients. Um, because I show my real side, clients just come to me because they feel like, hey, I like you as a person, might as well just work with you. Um, so yeah, there's no strategy to the madness in my opinion, just share you and they'll find you. Like I can, I can go from head to hat in a, <laughs> in a hot minute with makeup on. So in my opinion, in stories, um, show your true side. Makeup, no makeup, bra, no bra, however you're running the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are days I'm like, I'm happy I got my kids to school and I'm, please let, I, I literally prayed a couple of days ago, just let me get us there on time because if even three minutes later I have to walk them in. And I did not have, I did not have proper attire. And so uh, I think in stories you can show your true side. So you'll see me with or without makeup, but in your feed, your feed is your storefront. So in my feed, you're never gonna see a head photo of me. Those photos are put through 17 apps to look like that. Um, I think as long as you realize that your feed is on there forever and that's your storefront and you want them to look at it, you want them to like what's there, you want them to come in and buy something. So your storefront should be the best version of yourself. Your story is the true version of yourself. I'm gonna cut your story short. I want you to go inside. Oh no. Um, for, um, I'm, I'm thinking as they're talking, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I had these ideas. Because you know when you hear other people share, yeah. you kind of are thinking on your own. Um, for me, I, I, I just had this realization sitting up here. I, I start with how I want to make money, right? So on social media, like, um, I'm, how am I going to make money? So I always start from the goal of money. Um, an example would be, for me, I have to build my audience. So I gave a FISBO card away on social media with a video that had a prop. And I think it had, um, I got 13,000 people to opt in to my list, right? Giving something away of value. Um, in 2016, I hired my first ISA, because I it wasn't my first first, but for, for a long time, I didn't have an ISA. And when I trained them, I documented everything. And I love to research. That's like, for me, doing research and organizing things is where I get my fulfillment, right? So when I approach anything, I really always approach it as if I had to write a book on it. So if you ever write a book, you gotta know the name of the book, you gotta know the table of contents, and it's really the art of deconstructing kind of a linear process of teaching someone. So every chapter has a story, every chapter has a hook, every chapter of a book has a point. And those are all um, posts in, in theory. 
So, for example, if I, you know, if you're going to, for recruiting, for example, you know, you have to decide if you're going to recruit a new, there's a persona, a buyer persona. So, for me, I would, I would be saying, okay, you can either recruit a brand new agent who's trying to pass the real estate exam, or you can build it, uh, you can recruit an agent who's trying to build a team. And so, for me, I'm always thinking about, like, that principle, if that makes sense. And that, that's really where, because it goes back to what you asked, is the content. So the, the, the content is, um, if you think about, the, a, a buddy of mine calls it escape and arrival, but if somebody has a goal, right, let's say they want to flip homes, what do they have to do? You know, first of all, they got to get pre-approved, they got to get money, they got to find the home, they got to find a vendor. Finding a vendor, there's a whole post on finding a vendor, there's a whole post on finding a home, there's a whole post on picking out the carpet, right? So when I'm thinking about something, I'm thinking about, okay, the title of the book is The Desired Outcome of the Person. If they're trying to do this and I'm going to write the book on it, then just content starts coming to me over and now I have too much content. You know, it's the opposite. I'm, usually there's too much content because I'm thinking in a framework of if I had to write the book, what would the table of contents be? What would be the last chapter? What would be the first chapter? And then I'm just indexing. If you look at my Google Drive, I mean, I have... You know, and my, my, my personal goal, just, um, I want to write a book for dads. That's my goal, right? Because I couldn't find a book on how to be a dad. I remember when I was, when, like, there wasn't, like, I was like, how do you be a good dad? And I was looking for a book. So my, so I registered the domain a long time ago. Um, and that has nothing to do with real estate, but maybe I'll recruit somebody where, you know, maybe there's another guy out there that wants to be a better dad. And maybe, you know, he'll learn that I'm the rookie tackle football coach and, you know, he'll see me with my little boys and, you know, maybe he likes UFC or so. So for me, I'm just thinking like, for me personally, where do I want to do with my life? And for me, I want to write a book. My only goal is to write a book for my boys. If I'm not comfortable on camera, where do I start? And if I want to do a video, what is the process from concept to production and like the steps that you need to take? Um, and I think it's really important to get feedback specifically. Like I want everybody's feedback, but you won an award this week. So what were the steps that you took? What was the idea process from the minute you had an idea to the time it was ready for production and you put it out? So I think it's important to say that, you know, a, a heavily produced video versus something that I shoot on my cell phone. I think I've gotten to the point where I've gotten really decently good on my cell phone that you can't even tell the difference sometimes. Um, but sometimes, you know, every time I get a listing, I'm shooting a video for it. It's something that other agents are not doing for their listings. It's going to help me get more listings. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of going into the house and being inspired by the house. Vacant houses, great. Those are fun because they usually don't show exceptionally well. There's not too much character. I work with a couple of investors, so I often have clips. Um, I look at the time of year, I mean, one of my best performing videos was right by Super Bowl Sunday, and I knew that I was going to have my open house right by then. I hate sports. I am not a sports girl. <laughs> so my husband thought it was the funniest thing that I reached out to my tribe, and I was like, I need football pads and a helmet. Who's got it? Um, so someone gave it to me, and then Kristen, my teammate, shot on her iPhone that she's using right now to shoot this. Um, she shot the video. And it was just me playing the coach, playing the football player, playing the cheerleader, playing uh, the referee. And it was all real estate related in regards to getting the team together to get this house sold. So that video got 7,000 views. And they're all organic, natural, not boosted, not paid for views, which is pretty epic. Um, that house sold on the first day. So it was great. I, and people were like, oh, I saw your video on Facebook. I came to see the house. So that was cool. Um, it doesn't have to be super planned out. It doesn't have to be a beautiful production. Like Gogo said, you don't have to wear your makeup every day. Um, the fact that you're trying is light years ahead of the people that aren't. Um, the fact that you just even try. You don't have to always get in front of the camera. You can be behind the camera. Shoot the house, then do a voiceover. You can record it right on your iPhone. Um, my mom is very camera shy, although she's warming up. Um, you know, just, it, you don't have to be in front of the camera to do it. I think the most important point is just to try.
just start somewhere. And listen, it's it's social media. It's video really sucks, and people are writing like that was the worst thing I ever saw in my life. Delete it. It's gone. Like it, you know, give it a try. If it doesn't work, I liked what you had to say because you said that you do a couple of lives and see which one works best, and then run with that. And I think that's a beautiful idea. So why don't you guys give it a try? Yeah, Instagram will tell you if you have a business account. Instagram will tell you. If you look at like view insights, it will tell you which perf which posts perform the best. Boost it. One of those every single week. Whatever one performs the best that week, boost it and, and produce more content like that because that's what people want to see. Um, I use um, video mostly in stories and like IGTV, and I develop relationships with developers and they <coughs> like to use my social media as a platform for me to tour their really nice homes and I'll go through and tell people the finishes and this and that um, but then it helps me also on my listings I recently had a listing that had theoretically been on the market for 18 months it was never listed but um, the husband had passed away and it was a second home and everyone in the neighborhood knew that it was available to sell I could tell you half a dozen people that walked the house and um, I ended up listing it and I went through and I talked through hey, this floor plan works, here's where the value is. It had a 3,500 square foot air conditioned garage on it. And I pointed out, by the way, this house five down is listed at two and a half million. This one's gonna go for about a million. If you want the square footage, it's right there on the garage. It's like you can build that out. You can, you can put a half a million into this house. And we had three or four offers sold it over ask in less than five days when the average days on market in that neighborhood was six months. What I didn't say on my video was that there were two comps in that neighborhood that sold for under 900 that had more square footage and had a pool. So part of it is about framing it and all the offers came from people that actually lived in the neighborhood that would have known, they knew the house was on the market. They knew that she was gonna sell it. They knew for years. And so it's, it's creating a framework for people to make good decisions and tell me, explain it in a way that they can digest it. I have a few. Um, I have a few, um, to answer your question, a few different angles on it. So people, when agents are like, wow, I don't like the way I look on video, or I don't like the way I sound, let me break you the news. Everybody who knows you know what you look like, <laughs> and knows what you sound like, okay? So, <laughs> and the ones that don't know you, do you really care about their opinion? Like, it, so it really doesn't matter. Just grab that camera, shoot the video. It does not have to be perfect, actually imperfect videos that get the most views. The ones that are directed and shot by a videographer and it's beautifully edited, you're going to have a couple hundred views on it. Um, when you shoot videos, so, so originally my videos started out that typical, this is the new listing, there are three bedrooms, I wasn't in it, it was just the description of the home that's boring to people, especially the music they put to it. Like three seconds in, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like you lost me. Uh, a, B, I think it's very important for you to be in your own videos because that home is going to sell. I don't want to say it's going to sell no matter which agent lists it, but it's going to sell. Uh, in the end of the day, you are the ones responsible selling it, so you should get the credit for it. The only way people are going to recognize your work if you are in it. Um, so I think if you're going to spend money on edited videos and shooting a home, of course make sure the home is in the video too, but <laughs> you have to be in the video uh, yourself. The kind of lead gen strategy or tactics, if you're not having one, is you know you have a lot of the ideas and thoughts going on and you're just pushing it out. What's what's working and what's not, or what hasn't? Let, let, I just know these numbers. I spent four grand on Google, thirty-eight hundred. I, I can tell you the exact number: thirty-eight hundred dollars on Facebook. This is an interesting statistic, or maybe a number. But um, my average, the cash conversion cycle from the day that the person was put into the CRM, meaning in the bottom right, it says day contact created, to the day that person received our cost per appointment. So our, most, when, I, when I'm helping a real estate agent, this is what I do, I say, listen, what do you think an appointment costs, a listing appointment? If you run an ad with um, Sean Hannity, uh, who's that lady? Uh, what, yeah, yeah, willing to pay. Yeah, and so for me it was 500 bucks on Frisco Style Magazine. I was on the back of Frisco Style Magazine. It cost me $500 an appointment. 
Um, and But I listed eight out of 10 of those appointments. So I know $500, so if you ain't got enough lifting appointments, you probably are spending them enough money to get the amount of appointments that you need. And so it's just like, a, it's always just a math equation. Um, very, very specifically to um, um, the, the 161 days. We ran ads in Facebook, contact created. It was 161 days from the average time that the contact was created till um, they, they uh, set the appointment, right? So 161 days on Google is 4.5 days. Now our cost per lead was, uh, was almost twice, but that's called the cash conversion cycle because you know they're watching an anaconda eat a gazelle while they get their oil change on Facebook. But on Google, they got up and they went and they had commercial intent. They went and seeked something out and were looking to spend the money. And so, you know, the real, to me, the thing is, is if you can, if you can run the ad on Google and then retarget them on Facebook. So the thing is, is you pixel them on Google based upon the, the intent. And now you have an engaged audience. So if someone goes to Google and they write, you know, you can run an ad on YouTube based upon something they search on Google. If someone says, what is my home worth? You can run an ad to them on, on YouTube. So the question is, is you have to know those thought streams. In order to get your audience, you have to know what their wife, if you or husband, if you if you interviewed their significant other, you would have to say, what if you if you interview my wife, what's keeping Michael Reese up tonight about desired outcomes, sell my house, right? What's keeping me up? Shit, man, I got a pain. I got do things. So you know, that's where you're starting to get into the the, the conversations that are in my head and now you're getting the keywords because the keywords are the most important. And I'll tell you, if you if you go to Bing or Yahoo, um, the Bing and Yahoo, like people who go on Bing and Yahoo are, they don't have a cat and then people who have dogs, right? They're like, they're, they're, they're people, it's traffic. That's all it is, it's traffic. So the traffic is half the cost on Bing and Yahoo. So if you're not running ads on Bing and Yahoo, um, then you, you're probably don't, you're not looking at the math, but you could actually get the traffic for half price. So the thing is you use, people like to use Google because you know it has better tools. So you can build your campaign in Google, export your campaign, upload it to Bing and Yahoo, and have the same traffic to the same landing page for the same conversion for half of the price. And if you're really thinking at scale, you know, you have a funnel, you have a landing page. My goal is to get as many people to that landing page as possible and you should, you're in the business of trading nickels, dimes, quarters for dollars. 20, there's nothing better in the world than to invest in your own business. You can get a 23X on investing on traffic if you have a funnel. And I think that that's really the goal. With social media, these, just, they're, they're, these people are famous, right? To their audience, right? They, they really are. And I think that when you can combine that at scale, you know, and I think the question would be, this is a little different question. It's, what would I have to do in order to be able to spend $100,000 this month on social media? When you, like, how could I spend $100,000 to promote the video that she made that was great? Well, I can tell you where I have to start. What are we gonna sell? Because <laughs> I can't spend 100,000 if I have nothing to sell. But there's a guy right now making $40,000 a month as an affiliate for Red, uh, uh, um, um, Red X. Red X, right? You can be affiliate for Red X. You can be affiliate for ClickFunnels. You can be. You have to have a monetization strategy behind because that gives you an unfair advantage when you can really monetize and go get traffic that other people can't get. That's. It. So to answer your question, I do not spend money. I really, I think last year all together I spent like. I think it was like a thousand seventeen. But also, what's your following? Because you have a pretty large following as well. <laughs> yeah. So what what I do instead of you can spend money, you can spend time. I was willing to spend time. Uh, when I got into real estate, I realized what it takes to be a good realtor is, is cold calling and door knocking and open houses and a long list of things that I realized I am not willing to do. So I've had to figure out, okay, what am I willing to do? And for me, that was social media. So for me, the way I look at it is if you build your audience, just like the people that cold call, they know their numbers. They know they have to call 500. 
Yeah. I heard that too. I was like, uh, screech, screech. Um, they know they have to call 500, and the 500, they're going to have 10 appointments, and out of the 10 appointments, they're going to get two listings. However, the numbers are, I don't know, because I never cold called. So for me, the way I look at it, if you build a massive audience, they are going to call you, and that's where it was hard for me because I was not willing to make that call, so I had to figure out a way to get them to come to me. And so for me, instead of spending money, I spend the time, I build the audience, I made it massive. So I know out of that, I'm going to have you know listings coming and I'm going to have agents reaching out to me. So the only way I do spend money is, as, as you said, when you, when you decide to spend money on anything, running an ad, or you do have to have an end goal. Why are you doing that? And if you're spending money on it, you want that money back at minimum, but of course you want to 10 times that. Um, so the only way I spend money, so I make money now a few different ways, and Google's Bootcamp is one of them, and that's the only one I run ads for, but we don't run it all the time. If we have something, like we are giving away something, we reduce the price, or added something to the content, then we run an ad. And for that, you have to know who your audience is in order to spend money. Um, so that's the only place that I spend money. Everything else is organic for me. Mostly been organic, um, and I'm about building an audience and creating a community and then taking those relationships off of the app. And so kind of like what Michael was saying is getting them to a landing page, getting like, I say taking them home. Instagram's the party, it's the handshake, it's the small talk, it's a hey, how are you, hey, okay, we're a fit, good, I'm gonna take you home with me, right? I'm gonna take you to my landing page, I'm gonna tell you what your house is worth, I'm gonna tell you where the open houses are. And so kind of what Michael was saying is like, you can have kind of a lead magnet, which is like offering value for free so that's the what's my home worth or here's all the open houses happening in San Diego this weekend and get them to click on that link and that's them raising their hand hey I'm thinking about moving and you get them into your CRM and then you can communicate with them um, and it's been really successful and I actually I actually market mostly to women because I that's my demographic and I get it and I'm telling you what if you're married that your wife is deciding what house you're buying <laughs> and I can talk the numbers well enough that I can get the husband on board, but the wife's deciding, and so I'm going to sell it to the wife. And she feels comfortable walking houses with me, and she feels comfortable listing with me. And typically that is how we, I interface mostly with the wife. And now I'm going to teach all these moms how to go and sell real estate, and I'm going to build a quick funnel, and I'm going to take them home with me that way, and then I'm going to have them join the team. Or I don't even have a team, a group. I don't, like, I don't do teams. Um, but I have a, I'm just going to recruit them as agents that way. And have them all hitting six figures in ten, about 10 hours a week, and that's a good gig. And again, that's the story. It goes back to the story. It goes back to the story. You can take them home a lot of different ways, but you have to know who you're talking to. Sometimes I'm talking to clients that want to buy or sell, and other times I'm talking to agents. And other times I'm just talking, but I'm building a community to like the stay-at-home mom. That's who I'm, that's who I'm building the community around. I use Word Swag, I use Canva, I use color story to edit photos, um, and I'm looking at you as if you know what apps I use. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Um, just a little, I don't want to say pro tip, but if 20% if or more of your photo or video has writing in it, Instagram and Facebook won't show it. You can't even boost it. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't think those work very well. They're pretty. But they're not, they don't work very well to regenerate, in my opinion. People are not going to look at it because it looks like automatically you're selling something and people don't like to be sold. We're talking pictures. 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 Yes. Yes. yes, yes, the Canva app where you're putting the words over the pictures. Um, in my opinion, that's pretty, but it's not going to bring in the money on the door. Um, but for editing apps, I really don't edit the videos. I mean, I have videographers that if you're doing something like a, a teaching class or things like that, they're shot by a videographer. Um, they will have a little lettering on it, stuff like that. But most of my videos are just shot with my cell phone. I don't even edit it. I post it right as I as I shot it. The one app, the apps that I use for pictures, though, um, to make my storefront pretty, <laughs> even the eye bags, all that stuff. Uh, it's perfect 365 um, for anything that's face related. And then, um, what else? It's word swag. I love my quotes, so I use word swag for that. Um, I do post every sixth post of mine is a quote. So if it's just letters by itself, I, that will work. But if you're putting it over a photo, they're not going to show it. And uh, what other apps? Oh, uh, dark room for um, iPhones and light room for Droid. Um, those are my favorite editing apps of photos. 
Um, one one app that I would share would be uh, it's called Film Mic Pro, and it turns your they shoot movies with uh, this app. It turns your um, I have a Moment case, so this is a specific case called Moment, and it actually has lenses. So I have eight millimeter lenses, and so they shoot movies with this actual. You can go um, online and. In order to, to, there's a couple things. One is um, being able to have wireless um, um, mic, so I can do a wireless mic to my phone, um, so that I can be away from the phone and get the shot. I can blow out the the deal with the eight millimeter lens, so it's a fisheye lens. There's a couple different lenses. So, um, but the Film Mic Pro, it, it allows you to do a lot of the white balancing. It basically turns. I have I have a lot of uh, money invested in cameras. And um, it turns my phone into better than the cameras that I wasted a lot of money on. <laughs> so, Film Mic Pro would be the app. So, if you guys were to leave our audience with one top tip before they leave, what would that be? Um, my, when I say I'm trying to be like them, I really am, you know, because it's hard to. It is what y'all do is a commitment, and it's uh, it takes a lot of time. Um, but but from what a buddy of mine, you know, who um, it's not my story, it's his story, but I think it's pretty impressive. You know, he um, he built a following. He probably has five hundred thousand followers. He's doing a million dollars a month in revenue. His name's Ryan Stuman. Um and uh, when Ryan Ryan got in trouble, he used to be my lender, and um, when he got out of jail. <laughs> Sounds like a yeah. When he got out of jail, he had ten dollars, and he said, uh, "I bought a hamburger and came to you." And um, I gave him, I gave him a cassette. When he tells the story, he says, "I gave him a set of cassette tapes," and everyone's like, "What cassette tapes did I give you?" I gave him mass control. Um, but Ryan was doing social media for other people, and so he had like nine clients, and he was writing the copy, doing the post. And one day, he had this realization: Why don't I do it for myself? That was literally his realization. He's like, "Why don't I just..." post for myself he ended up building you know a, a social media following he's very consistent I think he would be somebody that um, I would look for I don't do what he does I've always admired people who are able to do that um, but I, I think it's um, you know anybody can do it and you are an influencer just because they don't like your post and they don't comment on your deal they still see it you know and, and they really do see it and so um, and if they don't like it it doesn't matter anyway you know, so you just really, from my observation, and I'm no pro, um, you know, I haven't posted on Facebook in probably two weeks, if not longer. Um, but I do have I do have ads and stuff that are running on Facebook, so it's a little bit different. Um, but I would say that, um, from my observation, I don't know how they do it. I mean, I, if they had a course, I would buy it. I'd say, yeah, y'all can sell, sell us something. <laughs> teach, teach us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can trade. Um, but yeah, so I would... Um, I see what I see people's Instagrams and I'm I'm impressed, you know, I mean I know Gogo, -Go, but even even it works on me, like Go Go is famous to me, you know, I'm, I feel honored to be up here. So that's my takeaway. I appreciate everybody uh, being here and hopefully added a little value. And to answer your question, in, in my opinion, if you want them to come to you, you have to build a brand. In order to build a brand, you have to realize that you are your business. You are not selling houses, you're selling you. So as soon as you realize that you are in a service business, you're servicing people and their needs, you realize that you are the business. And in order to make that, you have to be in your videos, you have to be in your posts, you have to show who you are because they will choose to work with you because they feel like they're just like you. Um, so my, my tip um, to you, make it about you. Uh, make it because that will be your brand, you are your brand, and uh, they will come to you. Um, my tip would be to get out of your own way and just get started. Just get started. Um, give people something to talk about. Like, do people probably think it's weird for me, like in my real life? Maybe. And do people sometimes have given me grief about it? Like, oh yeah, you need to roll up in a new suburban and da 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 da. And it's usually guys like Michael's, like it would be a guy, it's like usually it's a, I'm not, it's not you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's a suburban, it's not like, anything that fancy. But you know, like, my first year in real estate, I was nine months, I was pregnant and drove a minivan. So, like, if, when I say it can be done, and I have like nine pound babies, so just know I was pregnant. 
And so, yeah, and so, like, so people will sometimes give me grief about it, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, you, like, you think you're, and I'm, I, I'm nice the first couple of times, and then I say, yeah, I had a good year, I went and paid cash for it, it felt great. And I just am unapologetic about it now. Because that's okay, like, you don't, they don't have to do it, that, I don't care, and, but if they want to, if they have time to sit and talk about it, I don't have time to sit and talk about it, because I'm dreaming about click funnels. that's what I'm dreaming about. So I don't have time to sit and worry about who bought a new car, I don't care, unless it's mine. So I would say just get out of your own way, let people talk about you, it's fine, it's not a big deal. Um, if, you're ta if they're talking about you, it's because you're doing something right. Everybody was so much more eloquent than I'm about to be. <laughs> to you, boo. <laughs> if your vibe is gonna attract your tribe, there are so many people, especially in our area, that I do not want to work with. <laughs> this is how I show up. Actually, usually I have leggings on, so I got dressed up for you guys today. Um, so this is how I work. It's, it's me, and it, I have a value, and I know what it is, and I share that on a consistent basis, so when I'm meeting somebody for an appointment, they already know my value. I don't have to sell it as a package because it's already been bought. Um, so just go you, be authentic because it, you, we have this conversation every day in our office. There's a certain agent in our market that's trying to fake it till he makes it. And he's a lovely guy and he has a good heart, but nobody's seeing that. And so the people that know him are like, oh, okay. If you're you unapologetically, just like you said, it, people like you because they like you and they're gonna choose to work with you because they like you. And I think that's winning. <laughs> <laughs>